Shambus is a local commissioning tool for growth products. In this video, we are gonna learn how to use Shambus. We can change the user interface by clicking this icon. Next, I will introduce how to connect an inverter to your laptop. This is the connection diagram. We have to use a USB to RS485 serial port converter for this connection. The red cable is connected to the RS positive contactor. And the black cable is connected to RS negative contactor. On the inverter side, pin 3 and pin 4 in the COM connector are used for communication. Let's scroll down and check more products. This is Mic Series. It's the same we use pin 3 and pin 4 for connection. And this is Min Series. Nothing different. This is mod series. Still we use pin 3 and pin 4 for communication. You can check the user manual according to your products to find which two pins are for commissioning use. Now let's go back to Shambus and I'm gonna show you how to use it. First of all, you gotta make sure you have installed the driver of your USB to RS485 converter. Then the COM port number will be shown here. In the address input box, we can directly type the inverter's COM address. The default COM address is 1. You can also input 0 in here if you don't know its address. In the period box, you can input 500 or 1000. On the right corner, we gotta choose the, the corresponding inverter model. Now we go to the parameter menu. The second option is COM address. Here we take read and then click operate. We are gonna get the actual inverter address if it is connected. For example, the reading of the actual COM address is number 2. We need to correct 0 to number 2. And only after importing the correct inverter address, can we set other parameters on Shambus. The first menu on the left is device list in which we can check the status of an inverter. In the second menu, we can check BDC info and status. BDC is abbreviated from Battery Distribution Center, which is a battery management device. Now let's check the BDC wiring diagram. We can see that the BDC box is in the middle of an inverter, XH series and a battery bank. They are equivalent to a hybrid inverter system. Now let's go back to Shimbus and I'm gonna show some common settings. In the third menu it is related to BDC settings. We can set power priorities in different period of time. I will take an example. Now I have set three periods with three power priorities. Next, we go to configuration menu. The first option is to set inverter on or off. We can take read and check the current status. Off means the inverter is in waiting mode and being disconnected with the grid. 
All means both DC and AC have been turned on and it is in working mode. Now let's go to the on-grid settings. In on-grid settings, we have lots of options. The first one is PV input mode, which is related to the 399 register. We need to take read if we want to know what's the current value. For example, if the current value is 1, it means DC source. And we need to correct it to 0, which means independent MPPT mode. Both 0 and number 2 are related to PV source. Now I will explain the fourth option. Startup time is just the inverter's boot time. For example, it will detect the PV ISO value and something like that to make sure everything is fine and then it will start to synchronize to the grid. Number 5 option is restart time which is related to register 19. It will enter restart mode when an inverter detects something wrong during booting or working. Number 6 is related to startup PV voltage and we can't set it. Number 7 to number 10 are related to grid voltage and frequency limit settings. They just correspond to register 64 to register 67. We can choose upper to exit on grid settings and return to its parent menu. Next, I will introduce export limit settings. In export limit settings, the first option is set anti-reflux, which is related to register 122. In anti-reflux setting, we have three options. Here we can input one if we have an Easter on SDM0 export meter. The second option is anti-reflux power percentage. In this menu, we can set a power ratio that exports to the grid. The third option is active power after export limit failure. We can set zero here. It means when the inverter can't communicate with the meter, it will stop generating. We can also set an active power ratio in this setting. For example, we set 80%. It means the inverter will only generate 80% of its rated power after it fails to communicate with its meter. Next, I will explain the functions of register 232 and register 235. In three-phase delta connection system, sometimes we need to set these two registers. First of all, we need to set register 232 as 1. It means disabling N-line detection. And we need to set register 235 as 0 as well, which means disabling n to pe detection. Next, let's go to parameter settings. In parameter settings, we can choose a language, set a COM address, choose a budget, and set the inverter time. We can also clear the history of an inverter including power generation history and fault logs as well. We need to pay attention to that we have to clear history data on OSS as well after clearing the local data. Next, we are gonna learn safety settings. This menu is for professional and qualified engineers.
In this manual, we can set three ranges of high and low voltage and frequency parameters. Most of time, we only need to set AC1 and AC2. These two ranges are for fixing ACB outrange. In the end, we got a set register 80. It means 10 minute average voltage. Without setting it, sometimes the ACB outrange can't be fixed at all. We can see restore factory setting if we choose TLX model. If we set the value as 1 and then click operate, the inverter will get reset to factory settings. Now I will change the product to TL3X and check what's gonna happen. We will see the options are slightly different. The AC start range, AC range 1 and range 2 are all shown in the extended list. So we can also choose TL3X model to set the parameters of TLX. Because most of their registers have the same functions, if we check the Modbus RTU protocol, we will know that. Next, I will explain PV input mode. Both register 399 and register 124 are related to PV input source. Their default values should be zero. It will show connecting again and again on startup when either value was mistakenly set as 1. 0 means PV input mode and 1 means DC source. Next, I'm gonna illustrate how to update firmware. I'm gonna take max 100 to 125 KTLX for example. In here, we can choose a firmware type. Hex file means inner firmware, and bin file means communication firmware. First of all, we need to upgrade all hex files, and then we can upgrade the bin file. We have to follow the update sequence. By the way, we must make sure the letters of new firmware match the letters of old firmware before upgrading. Now we can upgrade the bin file. For example, there are two communication firmware update files. If the original version starts with ZBBA, we can only upgrade ZBBA09. Because different prefix letters relate to different chips. The next menu is settings in which we can change the mode number and serial number.
In the end, I'm gonna show how to use Modbus test. We can directly read and write register values in Modbus test. We will see three options when extending the list. Read holding register, read input register, and set single register. Now I will explain what's the difference between input register and holding register. The holding register is read, write register. But the input register is just read only register. For example, PV voltage and PV current. AC voltage and AC current. They are all related to the input register. All functions in parameter menu and setting menu are related to holding register. Next, I'm gonna show how to read and write holding register. We can untick read single time and then input 500 or 1000 in period box. I will read register 64 to register 67. We need to input 64 into the first box and then input 4 into the second box. Click start and it will show the readings every one second. Next, I will show how to set single register. If we choose set single register, we can directly input the value to be written in the second box. Now I will set register 64 as 2000. It means the low voltage limit is gonna be set as 200 volts. That's all for this video and thanks for watching.